All right, let us see, where were we? So we were looking at, um, uh, let me just get rid of that. Okay. Um, let me just pull up what we were looking at. Uh, working material, extended substitution system. Okay. By the way, I think the, the correct thing here is not an updating function, but yeah, right, an event selection function. And actually, I think we can put this into multi-way system so that multi-way system at every step, the event selection function, right, so the event right. selection function takes a list of events and the default is identity. Right. Or should it, given that we already have an event function, should it just take in a state and output a part specification? What is the event function? What? The, so what? the event function takes in a state. So right now we have the event function, which takes a state and gives a list of possible events. And we have the, and we have the evolution function, which takes a state and gives the next state. But what we could do is just say, have an event function and then an event selection function where the selection function takes in the state and just tells you which event actually happened. Let's do it in two steps because I think, I think we want to factor out the selection mechanism. I mean, the selection could depend on the state. All right, let's, let's talk gauges for a second, okay? What are some typical choices of gauge? And how will we interpret that in this context? Oh, in your space-like hypersurface analogy, um, mm -hmm. the just do the first update, what does that look like in terms of space-like hypersurface? Mm. Yeah, let me think about that for a moment. Um, I think what it looks like is it's this wave from the beginning. So in other words, yeah. imagine a, a one-dimensional space-like hypersurface. You, you could have something, essentially, my claim. Okay, so um, that's a separate branch, though. We're looking at, we need to look at that. But I mean, this is, um, and let's, let's. But I'm not, uh, yeah, I don't know. My problem is that because there's no order relation on the hyper edges, it's not even clear what that means. You, you know, in order to say, apply the first, you know, use the first rule that, that, that sort of applies, you already oh, yeah, need to have a metric. It's hopeless by the time you've right? got hyper edges, but, but I'm just talking about the string case. I'm talking okay. about, imagine that you had a, um, you know, a lattice in space. Then I would claim, yeah, in fact, we can draw. Okay, hold on. Um, Hold on a second. Let's let's just just a minute. So let me just rename this for a second. Um, I think this is multi-way systems. Well, this is um, string updating orders. Um, Okay, so, okay, so the, my second claim here is, let's draw the space-like hypersurfaces, okay? So, for example, with different updating orders, right? So, um, um, choices of gauge. So my claim is, here, let's put this in. Um, Okay, so here's my claim. We're gonna get a, a series of numbers here, and we're going to say at each step, okay, what I'm trying to draw is a series of lines that correspond to when, oh gosh, am I making any sense here? I'm I'm trying to, 
show at which step things got updated. Um, yeah, okay, so, okay. So at a given step, a given thing either gets updated, which means it has one added to it, or it doesn't. It has its, so we start off with a table of x coordinates and zero, okay? 10 x coordinates, okay. So at every step, we are deciding which of these to make an update on, okay? Um, I'm trying to think how to draw this. What I'm imagining is a series of lines, right? So if everything was updated together, um, okay, so an update consists of just saying, so update of x blank, y blank is just, let's call it a micro update, is just x of y plus, well, actually, we're going to say y minus 1 because we want to go down the page, okay? And then we're saying which of those things, so imagine Yeah, I think, I think we can do it this way. Okay. So, um, imagine we do this. So we say, um, updates picture of, um, the choice function, C fun, and length and time steps. Okay, so I claim that this is, um, we're going to apply map at micro-update on hash, C fun of hash, and then that's a nest list on this thing. on the length, go two steps. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say map indexed of um, oh, let's just do it this way. Uh, Yeah, okay, hold on. Um, first of hash, last of hash, plus one. That's the update. Oh yeah, well, now we want to do the map indexed of, um, this is not as crazy as you think. Hold on, this is going to work. Um,
I think this isn't quite right, but let's try this. Updates picture of first. Well, actually, we just want to say like this, lang5 integer 2. Okay. Let's see what that did. Um, so what that's trying to do, do, do you see what this is at least trying to do? Yeah, right. I think I may have got the level wrong here. So this is going to map it at level one. Oh, I think I want to map it at level three. And I want to say, that's the first element, and I don't want to do anything with that. Otherwise, I claim it might be this. All right, let's try this now. So what we want to do then is to say graphics of line slash at percent point slash at percent. No, well, actually that will work too. Okay. See that? Right. Now, arguably, okay, so let's do this. We want to say All right, let's try this, like 10 of those. Okay, so now these space-like hypersurfaces, we are kind of cheating because we're going, we're, we're actually advancing them even when they don't really advance. Right, they should really be intersecting past the second level. Right. Well, we can do that in a kind of cheaty way by making a parameter here because our our advance is just this here. The inexorable pitch is just this. Oops, I need to clear. Okay, that's a little better. Okay, so that illustrates what's happening if the, um, okay, so that was the choice case where it's just picking one. So now let's say, we'll say a random sample of range of 10 comma three. Oops, what happened there? Why didn't that work? Why didn't that work? Oh, you need to map oh, the parts oh, 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 oh. The map at there is not CFUN, but is list mapped over CFUN. Right. Right. Okay. So that's what a space-like hypersurface. I think we want a little bit bigger pitch here. That's what it looks like when the thing is randomly updated. Right. So each one of these. <clears throat> 
and and for a fixed length string we should be able to make pictures where we can kind of see that different updating orders correspond to these different space-like hypersurface choices right because each one of these is a choice of a sequence of of, of a foliation of the space true uh yeah of course yeah okay all right okay fine well then let, let, but let's okay so what do we learn what are what are some nameable choices of gauge in the general relativity case so for instance i mean clearly it's like z4 and okay well, so a trivial example here is, you know, clearly, okay, range of 10 just does that. Um, so we could do a, 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 well, I see the issue is that, that eventually we want everything to have been updated probably. So, so for example, this, Let's say we do something like, you know, one comma five. You know, hunky dory. We've updated those points, but we never updated these ones here. So, right. what is the property of strong a gauge? hyperbolicity? What's it called? Strong hyperbolicity, non-intersection of hypersurfaces under a foliation. But wait a second. These hypersurfaces don't intersect, do they? I mean, these are... Well, okay. in the continuum case, right, where you're basically saying there are points on the hypersurface which don't evolve, which have zero, where the lapse function is zero, you're basically saying there doesn't exist a foliation where these hypersurfaces are non-intersecting. With that property. I see, what, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. And so th this is the property of strong hyperbolicity in gauge theory. So, uh, as I say, like the, the the canonical choice of gauge, which which is known to exhibit strong hyperbolicity, is Z four. I don't know what that means. So hold on, hold on. So okay, you yes, say that that is that is strong hyperbolicity. Um, the succession of hypersurfaces don't intersect. Is the claim right? right. Okay. What is Z four? Is that a gauge in in gravity? Yes. Right. For for the BSSN formula. I, I don't know anything about this. What is that? So what is what does Z four mean? What is that? What is that? Uh, so there is a particular. Um, the, okay, the, the, there is a vector which is which is called the Z vector, and Z and Z four is the gauge condition where Z mu is always identically zero. And for um, yeah, for the for the BSSN formulas, and this is known to produce a strongly hyperbolic. Um, Foliation. Okay. So what would that be here? So there's a vector. So what you're saying is there's a vector here. And so, for example, one of the things that we might do is pick for these points, right? If you're saying there's some vector, some, uh, and how do you use that Z mu vector? I bet there's an analog here. I bet that analog is that you're basically picking points that are Let's think about this. So I'm going to claim that it's something like floor. You pick the points that you're going across the sequence, okay? Mm -hmm. And you're saying floor of, let's say, 3.4 times range of 10. Mm -hmm. And that's giving you a bunch of numbers, but that, in a sense, every time... Gosh, how to think about this. Do, do you see the picture? I mean, the picture is you've got, if you've got some vector that's going across this mm -hmm. and it's updating, what is it doing? It's updating every one of these. What is it doing? Is it cyclically updating? Um, well, so much for my, my thing, which is independent of, of, of um, step number. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Right. 
I think okay. all you're saying is that the, the, that in the aggregate, every point in, every point on a space like hypersurface will have will eventually have non-zero laps. Yeah. Which is probably the statement the same as your strong, strong hyperbolicity statement. Uh, it's certain. Yes, well, it's certainly related. Right. So the the lapse is how far down this thing is going to go. Yeah. Um. Okay. So. Okay. So you say a known case in GR where there is strong hyperbolicity is the Z4, how's it written? Z4 gauge. Right, yep. With a vector, see, gosh, I use subscript so rarely, mu, I use mu even less, isn't this, with a vector Z mu, Right. That, that's equal to zero, you said. Yes. Okay. Oh wait, hang on, wait. Or I'm I'm misremembering. Right. No. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Uh, I think if you get, if you set it if you set c mu to be zero, you get the BSSN formalism, which is what you want. The the z vector is basically a it's a correction to the Christoffel symbol for the conformal metric. Okay. Okay. But so so then. In our case here, you claim what that's going to look like is basically, what is that going to look like? It's going to look like, okay, so to get this, what we're going to say is each, gosh, how do we do this in this, in this case where we're, we're just picking, we, we've got to pick which ones get updated, right? And so here we could say, this is updated faster than this. Oh yeah, I see how to do this. I see how to do this. Okay, first of all, we gotta change this so that the C fun uh, takes two. Map at. So that C fun is taking the list what is it take, getting as an argument here? Oh, it's actually getting the whole thing as an argument. It's getting the whole X, it's getting that whole list of things. So it actually knows everything. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so that's good because then the vector condition is what? that somehow dotting into, so C fun, it picks those X, Y, Oh, humph. Well, just for, for inspiration purposes, I think we want to see what it would look like if we picked an ensemble, let's say six of them. Okay, fine. Let's just do a much bigger case, 20, 10. Oh, dandy. So that's what it looks like when, um... right, that's, that's the structure of these surfaces when they're being randomly updated. It is, I mean, okay. You know, I was never a, a personal, gauges in like QCD were never my personal friends. In other words, I don't know, the light cone gauge and all this kind of thing. I, I never really was into. The terribly named light cone gauge. 
is it? I mean, I don't, I don't know what, um, but I don't, I don't really know the significance because I was always computing things where the gauge didn't matter. So I don't know the significance of any of these gauges really. Do you know what the light cone gauge actually is? It's some dotted, it's some amu dot something or other, right? So it is a right, right. It's, um, you're, you're decomposing, you know, you're decomposing a plus into a zero and a three or something. Oh, here, there's a Wikipedia page about it. Gauge theory. In gauge theory, the condition A plus equals zero. So what the heck does that mean? That means the connection that... Well, so if you take a... If you have a light-light killing vector field... Yeah. Then... Oh, no, sorry. If you have a world volume, it will have a light light killing vector field. And that's mapped onto, you know, the one on the target space. Okay, wait a minute. So, so EG, light cone gauge, is blank, blank, blank. What is it? In our, and what is the analog of light cone? So the analog of strong high velocity is just that it's basically i.e. everything updates at every step, I think. Yeah, right. So I mean like to to make a, a true formal analogy with with strong hyperbolicity, what you're really saying is that actually each of these things isn't a hypersurface, it's a partial hypersurface. That the that the full hypersurface is defined only when every point has been updated at least once. And then the okay. you know, and then the lapse is telling you well how many intermediate updates were there, and you know the the shift vector is telling you somehow kind of what the ordering was. Um, I see. So maybe this picture isn't the right thing. So this is saying these ones didn't get updated. So let's take a look at this picture here or this picture here. Right. So th these are not these would not be legitimate foliations. In under a strong, strong yeah, under, uh, in a strongly hyperbolic gauge. Um, because because you effectively have intersections. So what you would want to do is, is, is continually apply until every point had evolved at least once from the previous hypersurface, and then plot that. Okay, so in fact, I do believe this will actually work here because I believe what we can do is to say, um, we can double up, instead of random, we can, we can, okay, let's do this. Let's say, um, so here, let's just see what happens if we say one, one, five. Oh yes, it does the right thing, right? Right. So what, we, what we're saying here is that IE, in each update, every point occurs at least once, is the claim. So let's imagine that we say, um, okay, so then we'll say table of i, comma, and then one plus random integer of three or something. Um, and we'll make that a table. Oops, that. Yes, that's a table for each i up to the length, which was 10 or whatever, and then we flatten this. And then we feed that in here. Come on. I mean, this fact that it's a function is a little weird. But anyway, 
Okay. Okay, there we go. That looks more like it. So then this is a fine strongly hyperbolic. Is that true? Yeah, it's true because everyone has right. And now let, let's let's if we didn't have the one plus there, then we probably have some places where there are guys that effectively intersect. Yes. Okay. And that's bad because it usually destroys the well posedness of the Cauchy problem. Indeed. Okay. So let's take. Um, all right. So that's so your gauge Z your Z four gauge. I don't quite understand, but the light cone gauge. Do you understand what it actually means for this? This light cone gauge condition. Well, I, I I don't know what a sigma model would be in this situation, so I can't really say. what I mean, I know what the light cone gauge is in the context of the sigma model. What the heck does a sigma model have to do with this? I mean, this is the, this is just a statement of of. Um, but the, well, the light cone gauge is a quantization of sigma models, is it not? Uh, it's probably one of its applications. But, okay, but I, I haven't the, seen the, it in the context other than that. I mean, it's just one of the gauges that, that people, some people are big enthusiasts of it. It's a personal friend. Um, okay, so the claim is that ghosts can be eliminated in the, I vaguely remember this. Right, right. But I mean, it's, it's, it's any, any quantization in which the target space has a light like killing vector, I think is a, is a light cone gauge. But I don't know of any situation okay. where that arises outside of quantization of sigma models. But then my knowledge of this is largely from Green Schwartz Witten, so maybe out of date. This does not get far enough. I wonder where this is something that gets further. Okay, so anyway, so one of the questions here is. Um, so I am getting convinced that this is very close to choice of gauge, that this updating orders thing is, is just like choice of gauge. Okay, so back over here. So we're going to look at the, um, we were looking at multi-way system, which was misbehaving for us. Uh, let me pull up multi-way system. Okay, so I'm just checking which version are we looking at. Multi-way system dash new, right? Yep, that's the version that works for me. Okay, and you're running what twelve point one? Mm -hmm. uh, which twelve point one are you oh, running? I don't know. The build from a couple of weeks ago. Oh, that's really ancient. Okay, well, let's let's anyway. Let's just load in this stuff. I don't know why that's blue there. And because what's dollar, two pattern dollar rules? subset is not defined. Two okay. pattern rules is part of Wolfram model. So let's go ahead and load that in. Has that been fixed? What do you mean by fixed? The problem with the rule specifications that was causing problems for you earlier with multi-way system. Has that been fixed? You mean this, this error message? Uh, no. No, I mean the other error message, the one about the rule specification. I don't remember that one. I, I, okay, I need to quit here because this is goofed up. You sent me an email a couple of nights ago um, with some error that you so. claimed was a multi-way system, but it was actually just because a Wolfram model wasn't evaluating correctly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. I don't know whether that's been fixed. Okay. Um, okay. This one here, right? Yeah, that's the one. Okay, so I can get the equivalent behavior here by going and doing this definition. Okay, so this is still not fixed. So Max has not committed that fix. Can you, um, I mean, I think he's around, so we could 
bug him about that right now. Um, could you could you send a mail about that or? Sure. Um, maybe ask him to join us, but I think we're working on something which does not really involve him right now. Um, and we should let him work on the. Okay, so now what we were going to try to do, what I was trying trying to do, was the causal graph here. Oh, for goodness sake. Okay, why does that work for you? Well, let's just try the case that you actually tried. What the heck is going on? Now it's stuck. Oh, no. no I... There we go. It works. Okay, that one works. Okay, but the causal graph 1, 0 to 0, 1 isn't working. You see what I'm saying? That's the two-way sorting rule. Right. Okay, so is that because there isn't a causal graph? Okay, yes, I, okay, I'm getting the same behavior. Uh, Okay, so these are the events that are claimed to be in this causal graph. Well, yeah, hang on, wait, wait, wait. There, there can't be any interdependence of, there can't be any causal dependence here, right? Because if a, if a, if a sorting rule can be applied, it's, it, it's, that's only because the list has not yet been sorted. It doesn't, it's not because of any previous sorting applications. Okay, fair point. So yeah, I, I think it's doing the right thing. There is no causal graph. Okay. Well, because there's no causal dependence, as in there's no... Um, there is no causal graph. Yeah. Because if you, nothing... Yeah. Because because no subsequent event ever depends on a, on a previous one. Right, you just have a linear, you know, this one. Each, history. But basically each sorting, each transposition event uh, is on a fresh piece of string. Right. Or I guess never, another way to, sorry. Yeah, never on one that has been updated before right okay i mean the way i would phrase it was just each updating event depends only on the unsortedness of the list sure not on any prior events mm -hmm. uh, if you call the evolution causal graph you'll see that there are no you, you can see explicitly there are no causal connections What the heck is that? Is that your self loops not having been updated properly? Uh, yeah, let me figure that out. Hang on. What are those vertices? Oh yeah, okay, that's my fault. Can we fix it? Yes, uh, I know what's happening. Yeah, I mean, it, so in order to generate these lists of all events, I had to start essentially from the trivial event that, uh, that just applies no replacement rule, but then has the initial condition there. Um, and I had code to remove that uh, trivial right, event. Why isn't why isn't that the whole question of the uh, initial state and the final state? Did you put those in? 
sorry, I, did I put what in? What, what question the, of initial the, the, the initial event, the Big Bang, so to speak. Yes, right. Have you so, got so, that in there yet? Well, that is the initial event. The, 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 the thing you're seeing there, which says blank goes to blank and then has an initial condition, that is the event that kicks the thing off. And so for the, I, I think what's oh, happening is... I see. For the case of a single initial condition, I had code that then removed that after the fact because you don't want to see it. But I think for multiple initial conditions, I possibly didn't treat that case. Yeah, but, but, but wait a second. Are you sure we don't want to see the initial event? Maybe we do. I think we need an option for whether to see the initial event. Okay. Okay. I, I, I had just been operating on the assumption that at least in the single initial condition case, we wouldn't want to see it, but maybe that's wrong. Why would we want to see it? Hold on. So each one of those is the kind of... Okay, hold on. Let, let's, let's look at this for a second. The initial event, I, I viewed it mostly as being just an implementational thing, right? It was, I wanted to apply a nest list, and so I needed something to initially apply it to. Okay, I'm enough of a believer in the language design to think that that isn't coincidental. Let's think about this for a second. Okay. Um, okay, so what is the initial event? The initial event, you're saying we have a string and we're going to start applying rules to it. Right. Humph. Well, uh, no, I agree that that does seem irrelevant. Um, let me think for a second. Well, that's, yeah, look, look, look. I mean, it's a question of what, yes, that's not right. It's not right because the, when an event occurs, when you're making the causal graph, what do the things that are so far untouched depend on, so to speak? See what I'm saying? Yes. And for example, if you have multiple strings, oh boy, are you assuming that every string in the multiple string case is an independent initial condition, or are you assuming that they all come from, you know, the master initial condition, so to speak? Well, I'm assuming that each one is an independent initial condition, and then because the whole thing is a graph. Yeah, will, fair enough. It will be fair enough. fair enough, fair enough. All right, we, we may want, in terms of graph drawing, we may very well want to take the initial things and make sure that they can be drawn at the top and so on. All right, okay, how do we remove these? Is it easy? Uh, let me go and try and remember how I did it for the single initial condition case. Um. Oh, okay. Yes, I see what I did. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in the function get traced states edge list, okay, I just mapped it over rest of events just list. Just with... one second. I'm just going to insert some new thing here. So, whereas I should have said rather than rest, I guess I should have just removed anything which. 
figure out what the code should be. I love you. Let me. I'm just. I'm just trying to yeah. verify this a bit. Okay. Okay, fixed. Um, let me send you the code. You send an email. Yep, I will. Okay, just tell me where to insert this. So um, uh, somewhere in in the events list section. Yeah, if you just search for uh, get traced states edge list, that stuff. Okay, so that's the two cases there. Yeah. These two here? Right. Okay. That should fix it. On. more jolly looking. Okay. Oh, quite swank, really. Okay, let's take a look at the sky. That's actually kind of interesting picture, I think. So that's showing the events. But there's still no non-trivial causal dependence here. Right. So in what useful sense is this system confluent? Well, here, let, let's do this. Let's, let's look at this one here. Uh, what I want to do is A, B goes to that, B, A goes to, oops, A, B goes to B, A. Oh, my God, what's it doing? Oh, my gosh, what is this mess? That has some non-trivial causal dependence. Well, obviously it does, but it's also a total mess. Why did it take so long? I suspect that those statements are ultimately equivalent. Which? Non-trivial causal, causal dependence and total mess. Well, let's see what this does if I say layered graph for all of these. Why the heck doesn't that make a layered graph? Whew. So it's starting off from all possible. Oh, it is making a layered graph here. Oh my gosh, what is going on? Right, because the the um, the events. Oh boy. We really need to do something with the coordinates for these things. The coordinates for the. So here we see our super selection rules operating. We've got several distinct sections of the, of the multi-way system, right? Um, let's just see what happens if we do the three case here. I do quite like this, uh, this little input of the typesetting system. What? 
uh, the, the, when you have an event that's being applied to the middle two elements of a rule, because the, because the elements on the other two sides are singletons, it typesets the event as a column vector, which is quite cute. Wow. If you look, I mean, for, for instance, if you look at, um, uh, hang on, if you, if you go to the list case of the same thing, oh, I see. it will typeset it as a column vector. Very confusing. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this is, this is this case here. What the heck can we do to make this less incomprehensible? ABB, oh my gosh. Okay, so the, the, the question would be the states graph of this. Looks like that. So it has two way. What that, what's that doing there? Why is there a second? Oh, because I've got vertex labels here on the layered graph plot. I probably don't need the layered graph plot here. I bet it's the same. Oh, I do need the layered graph plot. Okay. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So this is just saying ABA, AAB. So this is the 1A subspace. This is the, why, where, where's the 0A subspace? What does it do? I think that's a problem with your self loop, lack of self loops. I think you've removed the, another self loop, right? Because if I do this and I say my tuple is AAA, what? Oh, oh, oh. It doesn't oh. evolve. There's, there are no Bs. Yeah. I don't think that's a bug. I do. I think it should be a singleton in the states graph. Don't you think? Well, Hmm. Don't you think that should be? I don't understand why that's not in the states graph, but just a self loop. Well, it shouldn't be a self loop because there's no, the there's no event. It's just a point. Yeah, it's just a singleton. I mean, okay, we can, we can treat that case. I guess. I think we should. All right. I think um, I think we should. Uh, let's can we put that in? Can you see how to do that? Um, and does that affect other things if we put that in? It shouldn't do. I mean, at a trivial level, we can just evolve the multiway system, and if it returns an empty list, just fill it with the initial condition. I think we're going to get confused if we don't include this. Really do. Okay, fine. So, but, but how do we do it in a graph? How do we do that in a graph plot? What is it in a graph? Single vertex. Does, does a graph even support single vertexes, vertices without loops? Probably not. Um, single disembodied vertex with zero edges. Let's find out whether a graph can do that. I, I if you, okay. Here's here's a hack. <laughs> we could we can do a graph of a self loop and then call simple graph of it. Well, what happens if we do that? If you get a single that? vertex. Well, then there must be a representation. Uh, 
I don't think so because the if you call if you then call vertexless. Oh wait, hang on, no, 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 wait. I bet we got it right. I bet we got that right. No, wait, vertex. Hang on. Simple graph of. Oh yeah, okay. So yes, yeah, so you can just call vertex. You can call a singleton and then and then no edge list, and it will work. So if you just call graph singleton a blank. So just graph of one blank, one like that. Uh, no, you need the list of edges, or else it doesn't evaluate. Oh, I see. And there's no list of edges here. Right. That will work. Fine. So let's do that for. We need to do that for the. Um, so that will only be relevant to the initial conditions, right? It can never happen anywhere else. I think so. Right. These are these are sterile initial conditions, basically. Okay. Can we insert that? And does it only affect states graph? Well, hang on. I, it, I, it affects evolution do, graph as do well. Do you want it the whole? Do you want the whole multi-way system code to just act that way? Which way? Well, so I mean, in in the case that you have, you've evaluated there in the line above, multi-way system B A goes to A B. Do you want that to be to to have a singleton, A A A, as the initial element of that list? I think that would be more consistent, wouldn't it? Yeah, except then it means that if we call graph of that, it's going to return nothing. So we have to have some workaround when we call causal graph or evolution plot or whatever, like the evolution graph. Why does multi-way system, what is the code for the, the minimal code for multi-way system? Why does multi-way system of that return? Um, Nestless catenate of that. Yeah. But and the problem is, go. Mapped over it. Yeah, what's the evolution function? Mapped, and the evolution function is the thing which takes in a state and returns a list of possible states. And the issue here is. I don't understand why the replace in the evolution function doesn't just return the original thing. Get what I'm saying? Why does the evolution function not just return that? Where the hell is the evolution function for this case? Oh, there we go. I'm totally confused here why this isn't working just right out of the get-go. Ugh. That's the problem. The problem is that string replace list. Yeah. Returns nothing. Whereas string replace at least returns the initial condition. Right. Well, I think there's a good chance that if we just change the evolution function, everything will just work. Right.
Because multi-way system, in fact, in this case, should just be A, 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 A. Okay, so where is the evolution function in this whole uh, giant mess of code? Expansions for particular system types. Okay. Yeah, so for instance, for the, for the list case, it works. It, it, it does return. So you're saying in this case, if I do the same thing with it with the list. If you do that. So we're inconsistent, basically. Uh, well, string replace is not cons string replace list is not consistent with replace list. No, but that's wrong as well. I think it should just return. It should just keep going with the initial condition, shouldn't it? No, because there's no rule getting applied. Every edge of the multi-way system is a rule application. This is consistent. This is okay. what it should be. Okay, 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 fine. All right, so what are you saying? So string replace list, if it does nothing, are you saying if string replace list is blank, it should return hash? Yes. I think that's what I'm saying. Because, yeah, hang on, wait. Let me just check that I know what I'm talking about. Well, so you're saying replace list does something different from string replace list. I think so. Hang on, let me, let me just check that's true. Oh, wait, no, replace list does the same thing. So, uh, Well, all this pruned rules thing maybe do something different. What is yeah, that? Yeah, anyway? right. Right. Yeah, I bet pruned rules, because it's got left and right, is going to do something different. Hmm. So should we do a string join equivalent of that? No, because it'll slow things down. I say we try doing, oh gosh. When would string replace list return nothing? It only returns nothing. When there are no events. All right, let's try just making if hash equals 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 that. Well, actually, it's not the same hash, is it? No. If um, All right. Um, is get string replacement event, is it doing something different? To what? Well, to, to, to doing with the same event, wait a minute, modification to string replace list handles the case of, quote, sterile initial conditions. What the heck is that? What is that?
you need an extra layer of nesting around the hash. This one here. No, no, in your if statement. No, I don't. Around the S, you mean? Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes. No, no, no. Around no, the hash. Around the hash. I think I'm right. Yeah. I don't think you're right, but we'll try it. Hmm. You do seem to be right. Hmm. Okay, that should, that should. shouldn't happen. Well, are you sure? I think that's what it should do. Because if it if no rule applied at the beginning, then no rule applies later on either. Yeah. So the claim would be that this thing, if we look at states graph of it, that's that's just not correct. Well, let's see. Evolution. So now it's probably going to go bonkers if I say evolution, evolution causal graph, right? Because you say, well, actually, if we, if we say just events list, right? It should return nothing. And it's a bug. There. Okay. Amazing. That's what happens in the universe, you know. If, it, if, if there's some case that hasn't been covered, it just returns symbolic code. Never mind. <laughs> the, um, in somebody's, uh, uh, for a while, this guy, Ed Fredkin, was had this, no, maybe it was Marvin, so they had this stupid thing about to prove that the universe was looking for rounding errors in the universe. Right. It's just the most incredibly misunderstood idea of what was going on. Just incredible. Anyway. Okay. So this is wrong, we say. I think so. Well, what we think that should be is a disembodied AAA. Yes. Because it should have no events. Right. By the way, it's it's um, I, I, there's a there's a reason it didn't evaluate. It's called all events list. Oh, that's that's a boring reason. Now, what does that mean? So it's saying that after the initial setup, there are no events that can be applied. Why, that initial setup should not be visible in all events list. Well, yeah, I mean, that, that's what we were discussing earlier, right? What you described as the Big Bang event. No, I understand, but you I just put that in. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. Uh, well, hang on, wait. I removed. Yeah, that should hang on. I removed it from the evolution events graph and the evolution causal graph. I didn't remove it from the all events list, but I can let's, do that. Let's remove it. Where, where do we go to remove okay. that? Uh, let's see, where did I put all events list? Okay, yeah, so, so it should select from that nest list which nest list in the all events list okay well, so i better go find all events list well hang on I, I can just i can send you some code Wait. Um. Okay. 
me as this works. Oh my god, wait, what did I just do? Well, if you just inserted that event, why isn't it simply the first event in the all events list? Why doesn't every rule have that as its first event? Uh, well, there's a subtlety of where, uh, when there are multiple um, initial conditions. That was what I was doing before, and that was why I was screwing up when we put in multiple initial conditions, because I was just calling rest on the whole thing. Well, why don't you just remove the ones that have blank to blank? Yeah, I mean that, that's that's what I'm that's what I'm about to do. I mean, but it's only in the first element. You don't even need to bother with the other elements. Right, right. I guess. Well, in fact, we could just remove as many elements from the beginning as there are initial conditions. Up to you. If you think that's right, sounds dangerous to me. But I guess that's right. What about if there are repeated initial conditions? What does it do then? Oh, that's a good question. Okay, yeah. Seems oh. to put them in. I kind of agree with you that the that after the initial AAA there, I mean, this again is the initial event question because it's like, where does the AAA come from? Right. I'm telling you, there's hackery with this initial event, and I don't think the right solution is what we just did with the replace list. I think the right solution is that we're adding in the initial condition. Right. That the first element is always the initial condition, come what may. Mm -hmm. Which is otherwise known as saying that there's an initial event. <sighs> Okay, so I'm going to remove this thing here. I think this is wrong. Oh, wait a minute, how did that work? That's already correct. That's exactly right. It's exactly what it should do. It's exactly what I think is correct. Incredible. Okay, so where did it go there? I think something has pruned it. You know, un... All right, let's look at how states graph works.
Is that correct? Each event in a states graph, in states graph, all instances of, at all steps of a given result are merged. Each updating event, however, each updating event, updating events between different updating events that connect the same results are still shown are however are however still shown as separate edges okay or just updating events are unmerged well but it's it's um No, because it's 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 making the point that it isn't so. I mean, to any one of these, we could, if we wanted to, say, given this thing here, given that states graph, we could say simple graph of that, mm -hmm. and we get that magnificent. Okay, what did you, what, sorry, what were you looking at? I'm sorry, you were looking at the removal of initial events in all events list, right? Right. But I'm now wondering if that's, some, it, do we definitely want to do that? I'm not clear that we want to do that because I yeah. think that's exactly the, the thing that is giving us. Right. The, the, those are exactly what's giving us those initial states. I don't think we do want to remove them. Mm hmm However, I think that this isn't correct, that that rule, which doesn't appear any in our, anywhere in our rules list, isn't the right rule. Should it be blank goes to ABA? No, I think we should have a symbolic thing there. I think it should be Big Bang, basically. I mean, I think that's the initial... Okay, yep. I, well, let's not call it Big Bang. Um, but no, no, we'll call it initialization or something. Yes, and we probably want an option of whether to remove the initialization event. So what we're, go we're going to do then is, is that event, is it going to mess up our other code to have an event? See, I, I think states graph, if we do this correctly, I think states graph is just going to come out on the wash, so to speak. Right. Um, So I think we want an option here. Um, okay, all events list. So we probably want something for all events list. I don't think states graph will come out in the wash, by the way. Okay, but for all events list, we probably want something which says um, uh, include initialization events, to which the default is probably true. Whether to include pseudo events that set up the initial conditions. Does that make sense to say that? I think so. Okay, so what should the form of the initialization event be? Um, and by the way, why on earth Why are there three elements in that list there? There should be a uh, suffix. Yes, right. So it's a, it's it's prefix, then the thing that's getting acted on, and then the suffix. There's no thing that's getting acted on here. In this for in this in the way that we set this up, 
it's the prefix. I don't oh. see the thing being acted on there. Uh, wait, hang on. Did I do a layover from a different? Hang on. Let me check one thing. We had this whole argument with Max about whether we needed to include that for the Wolfram model case. Right. Okay. I know. I think this is this may just be a typo on my part. I think that was meant to be a two. What was meant to be a two? As in the the, the second element of that list is supposed to be. Okay, a... but in the Wolfram model case, is it correct that in the events all events list that we don't include, we only include the rule at the beginning? Uh, well, I, I think as I, my my response remains unchanged from last time. It depends on what you mean by rule. If you mean the anonymized rule, then of course you need the specification of what it applied to. If you mean the particular rule application specialized to a particular input, then you don't. Correct. Correct. But what is it that we want there? Uh, I don't know. Your, your view on this seems to have changed, I think, on the last couple of times you talked about it. I don't think there's an obvious answer. Well, we can deduce. Let's just have the instantiated rule there. And we might want an option to determine whether we include, oh yeah, okay. event rule specification, how to indicate which rule is evolved in each event. Mm -hmm. Right. But I, I still raise the same objection I raised last time, which is that it's in general a lot harder to go from the instantiated rule to its um, anonymized form than vice versa. Oh, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, right. So we're losing information by doing that. Look, I think what we should do in the Wolfram model case, we should have an option to include both the rule and its instantiated form. Okay. But the Wolfram model case, this last thing is just a rest, right? So it's different. It has a different structure. Right. Okay, hold on. So the natural thing, so the issue is, so maybe we just need different structures in the two cases. In one case we have, because there's no point in the, in the string case, I mean, unless we had a pattern rule for strings. Okay, what would we want to do if there was a pattern rule for strings? What would that even mean? B blank A goes, B X blank A goes to whatever. By the way, that's what our quantum formalism is going to have in it. Yeah, yeah no, I, I agree, but is there, is there a way to do that? To do what? Uh, hang on. I, I, I would think happens would... and something I've worked with before. Oh yeah, yeah, you can do that. I mean, you, you just have tilde tilde, a tilde tilde x blank b tilde okay. tilde. Okay. Um, b, 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 x blank tilde tilde b. Right. I think that will just work with string patterns. Um, hold on one second. I will be right back. Just a second. Okay.
And I'm back with more chocolate. Excellent. Okay. Did you figure out something brilliant here? Uh, I don't think so. Hang on. What, what was I meant to be doing? We uh, thinking about discussing... the initialization events. I thought we were discussing how string patterns would work. Or is that... I mean... Oh, yeah, we were. Well, we're... let's... Okay. So... Okay, let's write down the format for an event. Um, by the way, did we ever write evolution tree? No. You you had it in your you you had something it was like exponential evolution tree in your version of multiway system, but there was no code for it. It was just a section name. Okay. So that's a to do. Well, actually, is that even useful? Mm. I might be pedagogically useful. I mean, I, don't know, I feel like it? I yeah. feel like in any non-trivial case, it's just going to be so large as to be unreadable. Well, I know, but. I mean, that's the graph. That's assuming you didn't know how to do hypergraph isomorphism, for example. Right. Assuming the isomorphism function didn't work. Hmm. Well, let's just think about that for a second. So what's it going to look like in the case of ordinary evolution? It exactly denies the states graph, so to speak. Right. It is. Or it's some like threaded form of the states graph. In what sense? No, no I think it's an evolution plot. Look, it's like the evolution plot. I think an evolution plot, let's look at the code for evolution plot for a second. Okay. So basically, there's always a merging function, there's a union. Um, Oh, let's just get rid of it. It's not worth the trouble. Probably never going to use it. And I don't know what evolution graph was supposed to be. Do you know what that was supposed to be? No. Okay. Could it have been an earlier naming of evolution events graph? Yes. Remove it. Assuming we don't, I assume we don't have any code for this. Predecessor rules list. Okay, so that's a real thing. Mm -hmm. But predecessor rules list doesn't include. Um, 
Okay, so all states list are merged. Yeah, I just zero then. Okay. Um, predecessor rules list certainly doesn't include the initialization event. It doesn't include any events. It only gives states. It includes the initialization state with an empty list. Hold on. Are we doing causal graph steps on merged? No. What does it even mean? I don't know. It's not my code. With states on different steps not merged. States on different steps. Oh, that's a version of evolution events graph, I think. Right, because that's saying I don't really understand that. Okay. Do you think that there's code for that in here? There is for the strings case. But I mean it's not it, it's not code that will work with our new formalism. This was all the you know character specific cases that I didn't want to include for the general case. But what did they do? I don't I, I don't know. They were somehow used in constructing um, the causal graph and the evolution causal graph. But uh, yeah, like I said, it's not it's not the way I would have done it. So I'm not really sure what they do. Okay, let's see what we can remove here. Okay. Okay. Individual element relation replacements and causal relationships. Do you understand what that is? No. Okay, causal graph steps are merged. Do we understand what that is? We think we don't understand what that is. Right. But evolution events graph, we do understand, right? Right. Okay. All right, so that one is going away. Evolution causal graph. Yep, that's good. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Evolution causal graph steps on merged is going away. And element wise evolution causal graph. Wait a minute. There's an evolution causal graph steps on merged. What is that? Does it work if you run that code? I, I'm, I'm wondering if that's from an earlier version of the notebook. And it looks identical to evolution causal graph. Right. Wait, what happens if you evaluate that? Well, just a minute. Splough. Okay, so I think we can assume that that's irrelevant. So, I mean, um, so my understanding is Max had this way of doing the combined evolution causal graph by just tracing events, by, by tracing causal relationships, not for events, but tracing causal relationships between individual characters in each string, which A, I don't think was necessary, and B, I don't think generalizes to anything other than strings. But is it, is it, does it lead to any interesting results? I have no idea. It's not. Sigh. Okay. 
Um, the only thing I can say for definite is I think my way is simpler and faster. Okay. All right. Probably obsolete. Hmm. What? No, sorry. I was looking at these um, sorting things. They produce some, they can produce some amusing multi-way systems. Okay. Hold on. Let's, can we, can we, can we, can we, Focus for a minute on trying to. <laughs> Sorry, yes. I, I, and then I want to hear what you've. Evolution causal graph. What did you just run? Uh, I was running, hang on, I can send you. When we were discussing earlier about whether um, all uh, sorting rules will be confluent or not, I mean, I think the answer is, is yes, but they can also do some weird stuff. Which one should I run, the second one? The second one, yeah. What the hell is that? It's a complicated <laughs> multi-way system. Okay, hold on. So that's of a single... I wonder what happens if we say layered graph of that. So what's going on is actually not that complicated because it's just, you know, different yeah, right. ways of sorting a list, but it's uh, produces something quite geometrically appealing. It's kind of fun. Um, and each one of those events is a shift. Is a transposition. Um, what were we doing? We were looking at the initialization event stuff. We were trying to define what events look like, right? Mm -hmm. 
Um, okay. Then um, events are generally given. I don't think we talk about this anywhere here. No. How to label events, how to label states that appear in graphs, how to label events. We need, we need all of those. We didn't put that in because that's, that's the thing that determines this is, um, right? Right. That's, that's, the for, that's what determines these things. So we need that event graph label, state graph labels. Events are generally represented in the form rule update rest the update is the is a specification of the update being done and rest as a representation of the rest of the state that is, um, is, this, is this right? Yeah, yeah. Rest of the state not being updated, comma, not being updated. I was just noticing something. If What's you that? have a very large graph, does vertex labels stop working? Vertex style stop working, sorry. Vertex style. What does that mean? By default, I think it doesn't, doesn't still do its thing. Okay. I don't know, I was, I was just generating a really big um, evolution events graph and it isn't uh, formatting but it has uh, over a thousand vertices. So I'm just wondering if that's a, an intentional thing. Anyway, sorry. It may be worth mentioning that, that you know the strings case represents rest as a, suff a prefix suffix. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to say what each of these cases does. Right. Right now, because of my own laziness, they they all use a prefix suffix thing, even though for the Wolfram model case that isn't really necessary. What is in the prefix suffix in the Wolfram model case? It's all the hyper. So in, in the sort of in the ordering of hyper edges that you give the you know you give the rule. It has the, you know, it gives all the hyper edges that appear before the hyper edges that are being acted on and all the hyper edges. But the hyper edges that are being acted on may not be uh, um, right. adjacent. Yeah, so it takes the first hyper edge that's being acted on and just outputs everything to the left, everything to the right. Bah, I don't think that's a good idea. But let's, no. let's try and clean this up, okay? Let's think about what this should be. So, so what does it do in terms of the instance of the rule versus the rule itself? Uh, so let me try and... Remind myself, but I, I tried a few different versions of this because our opinions on this keeps kept changing. Um, let me. Test something.
Right, okay, so right now it just, it only gives you the general rule. It doesn't give you the, it doesn't give you the instantiated rule. So how do you know where the instantiated rule took place? Uh, well, you can take the complement of the hypergraph with rest. You know what, let's do this. Look, look, what we should be doing is that, um, Let's look at the more general case, okay? The most general case is, you know, it's the general rule. Okay, let's look at this. It's the, it's the general rule. Then what is it? It's the elements not involved, specified somehow. But in the case of a string, they're positional. It's elements not involved, followed by the um, how do we want to specify the elements that are involved? I mean, to me, it's it's something like to get together with the LHS involved, because you don't need to give the RHS involved, do you? Or do you think that's useful? I don't think it's useful. I think, yeah, I think you just want the, you just want the things being acted on. Then it's okay, trivial. so, then, so yeah. then, then what it would be is the general rule, the elements not involved. So in the case of a string, that would look like Oops. Well, this would be it would be the rule, the prefix, the suffix, and then the LHS. Is that reasonable? And we can choose to omit the LHS by default in the case of a Okay, so so let, let's let's write this down. So this is by default. So the form. Okay, that's not correct. So it's of the form rule. Together with. Well, there's a certain argument. that in fact the correct form is LHS rest. Where Look, another thing we could do is just give something Okay, okay. Why don't we do this? Why don't we have a thing that says, um, event specification function? Okay. The event specification function is applied to we could just do an association here. It's applied to an association that says 
rule 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 index or rule number rule instance um well we could say instance and rest okay where what do you think of this and then then what we do is for the case of um um the function the default function is hash rule hash rest for strings and lists and hash rule hash instance hash well what about hash rule hash rest hash instance for Wolfram model what do you think of that did we lose Jonathan no no I'm uh, I mean I don't I don't immediately see the advantage to the design we came up with earlier, but it's well. What's what's the design we came up with earlier? Uh, where you <clears throat> where you have the you have the particular rule, you have the rest, and then you have the left hand side. I, I'm just I'm just trying to do this so that we don't have a bunch of crud in the strings case, because it's different in the two cases, right? You know, there's no point in giving the instance for the strings case. Right. I'm, just, I'm just making it so that we don't have, because in these pictures, we're going to end up with. Well, why don't we just have, why, why don't we just say that if the left-hand side of the rule is, you know, the left-hand side of the rule that got specified, then don't just, don't, don't bother to, dis like only bother to display it. If you know what? There's a different approach to this. The different approach is to use the event graph labels to deal with this. Right. And just to decide that it's rule rest instance in all cases. Right. Okay, fine. Let's just do it. Okay. A generally specified in the form rule rest instance. Well, LHS basically. Where rule is the are we are we calling that transformation rule sub i where rule sub i is the part of the rule used rest is the unmodified um as the part well, of the, why the, the part of the rule used well because it, it might be a list of rules that's the whole point are we not treating are we calling the whole thing a so are we calling the whole list one rule i oh, know it's rule you're right it's rules so. okay so the so just a minute. Oh, we just said it here. Right, except we don't want that to be specific instance. We want it to be general case.
and then the, the LHS is the thing which specifies it. It's the general form of the rule. Is the rule. is the, whatever I want to call it, is the instance, is this the state of the, is the state. Is the rule involved in the event? Rest is the rest of the state not involved in applying the rule and LHS is the part of the state to which the rule is applied. For well, from model systems, it is the I mean, either way here, we're going to have redundancy, right? Because even with this form formulation, in the Wolfram model case, rest isn't actually required. Because you could always just take the whole state and just do complement LHS. Fine. But I don't think it's harmful to... Um... No, I, I don't think so either. But then I also didn't think it was harmful to have, you know, the, the redundant information in the strings case either. Well, fine, but we're going to have the redundant information in the strings case. The only question is whether in all events list, that will make all events list have an extra thing in it. Right? Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, and we also got the step number for each event, right? So we could we could include that as well, right? Okay, events are specified in this form. Don't you think we want an option to decide what's included here? Because there's just so much different stuff that could be included. I don't know. I, I mean, I if think... we've got the step number, right, we, we could just say it's pretty clean to give a, a function that just says. I thought our plan was to have, a, was to map the step number over this events list. What does that mean? So you have, you know, st step one just means one goes to, and then that event specification. Yeah, I think that's probably right. So it's just a map thread. No, it's not just a map thread because you don't know. By the time you've got the events list, you've no idea what comes from what step. Right. 
Right. Okay, I think yeah, it's. So. I think it's kind of a, look. I, I really think this is a better thing because I think this way we can, if we've got an association here, we can add more things to the association for some weird kind of rule where we where we care about something different. Okay. Okay. Rule rule number. Instance rest step number. with the following keys. Um, the form of events given in all events list and related properties now the event rendering probably can go from the original event association. Okay, so one events given and related properties is determined by the setting for event specification function. So the default for string and list substitution systems is rule comma prefix suffix while for Wolfram model systems it is what? Rule, comma, rest, comma, LHS. Is that what we think? Well, if you want to be redundant, yes. What, what do you suggest it should be? Well, the minimal would be rule LHS. Because there's no ordering on the hyper edges. Fine. So you can just take a complement with respect to LHS. I mean, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I think it's nice to include the rest because it's easy to reconstruct what the state is just by looking at the event without having to know the state a priori. But if you're using this association architecture, I guess that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any difference. I mean, that, that, let's just have that be the default then. Okay. That just makes things implementationally more difficult. Well, then let's not make it be the default. I mean, <laughs> whatever you want, it doesn't matter. I don't care about this case <laughs> because we're going, to, we're going to end up, we're not going to end up looking at these. We're going to end up. No, I agree. Uh, I agree. We are going to look at these ones. We're going to look because we, you know, we need to, for debugging, we're going to need to look at the string case. We're not going to need to look at this case. Fine. Then, okay. Then have rule rest LHS or something similar. Okay. 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 Fine. where okay Um, and then we have to actually insert this, and then we also oh, geez. rule the complete rule in its original form from rules. 
complete rule used. Right. That makes sense. Right. Rule number. The the or should we call it rule index? Rule number. The position of the rule used in the list of rules given by rules. Okay, rest. A part of the state not involved in this event. Okay. And the step number. The overall step number, the, the evolution step number at which this event occurred. Right. Okay, that's irrelevant. Okay, so should we can we please insert this now the event specification function? Okay, let's let's just screen capture that so that we remember what we were talking about here. And then let's actually insert it. And then then we've got the initial, okay, so let's just make a to-do list. We've got this, um, and we've got, so this is event specification function. And then we've got also the uh, include initialization events. And we've also got the mystery of singleton states, singleton nodes in uh, events graph. I could right. use, yeah, an events graph. Or well, states graph. States graph, sorry. Um. which definitely won't be handled correctly in the current way we're doing it because for states graph, I'm now just specifying an edge list. We established that doesn't work. Okay, I don't think it's the most important thing dealing with singleton nodes in states graph, but I think we are gonna get, we're gonna make a mistake if we don't include them. Okay. I, I, I think we're not gonna make a mistake today because we remember those exist, but we're gonna make a mistake at some point in the future. Um, <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's go back here to look at where we generate events for the all events list. Oh, here we need to put this in. Okay, event rule specification and include step number, just go away. And instead they get replaced by event specification function. Okay, so now where do we go to put that in? It's not relevant to states graph, right? No. 
right? Where do we need to pass this thing down to? Hold on. Oh, that's okay. That that goes. So that's the first argument of the multi-way system. Do we need to pass this events graph thing? I mean, the, this event specification function into the first argument of the multi-way system, or is it just post-processing? I think it's just post-processing. Okay. Do you agree? Um, if it's, I mean, if it's only something that we're going to display for you know, the events graph and things, then it, I don't think it matters, yeah. Okay. If it, yeah, as long as internally the event specification remains kind of what it has been. Which is what? Uh, which was what we decided on in the last meeting, which was the um, rule rest uh, structure. Okay, fine. Well, let's, let's just, okay, so let's go ahead. Um, which I quite liked because it meant that you could, with, in the Wolfram model case, where which is the one case where it matters, you can reconstruct what the LHS is by doing a complement of rest. All right, well, fine. So that's just fine. So now we're going to get the best of all worlds here. Okay. Yes. So this is going to be the initialization thing, which we're not yet dealing with. What is event function here? That's the function which takes a, a state or a list of states and outputs a list of possible events. Okay. In in that in the format that you've now that you've defined, right? Yes. Okay, so somewhere here we have to put something in that says um, okay, so we've got to say event event specification apply event specification, apply event specification. but it probably depends on what type of system it is, doesn't it? Right. And so we're going to say here, and now we're going to say, um, ESF, event specification function. And then we're just going to give an event, I think. Now that event is in what form for this, for the list or string substitution system? So it's in the form of a rule and then a list containing the... Uh, Prefix and suffix. Yes. Okay, so it's just that. Okay, so I claim this is simply ESF of, okay, now we don't have the, the step number here. Right. So the only way we'll get the step number is if we have an accounter inside the nest list, right? I guess so, yeah. Although here, no, we can do that by map indexing this thing over this, right? Okay, so this is rule, arrow rule, rule number, 
Boy, that's a mess. Oh, God, we've got to know the original rules to know the rule number. Right. Which is why I don't like the idea of a ha- rule number being in the association. I, li- I prefer the idea of having the general rule on the left-hand side. Well, so we'd, ha- we'd have to do a position to get the rule number. Right. All right, we'll take out the rule number. Yeah, because its rule number is kind of long gone by by the point in time we're at this. Yeah. Okay, so then we've got rest. Our rest, which is not very profound. Oh, we forgot to put LHS in there. So what are we going to call it in the in the association? Instance or um, argument. I think instance is better than argument because argument implies that there's only a single pattern, so to speak. All right, okay. Instance. So the instance in this case is simply first of rule, right? Right. Okay, so what we can do here is just as a short circuit, we can say automatic. We don't even care what the step is there because the automatic setting for this is just rule and rest, right? Right. Okay, now for the case of um, let's see just a minute. Okay, for the case of a Wolfram model. What are we being given here? What are we, what are we being fed in the case of a Wolfram model? Is it also rule and rest? Yeah, I think so. Okay, but now instance is no longer first of rule. No. Instance is complement state, comma rest. Where's the state? Well, this is part of the problem. Okay, what's the state? Oh my God, what a mess this is. Okay, where's the where's the listing of events for the Wolf model case? Where's that code? Uh, the, I mean, it it was the same as in the list substitution case, but it's no longer treated that way because we didn't decide on a format for it. Wait, 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 wait. wait. What are you saying here? So, look, these are the two cases here. What happens in the Wolfram model case with, with all events list? What does it do right now? 
it follows the list substitution case, as you can see below. If it, it, with get traced states list, it treats the two equivalently. Okay, so then what's it going to return? What's it going to return in this case? Just, just tell me what you think we should do here with apply event specification. What, what are we going to feed apply event specification? Uh, I think a rule, well, rule rest left hand side would be my vote as normal. Okay, fine. So in this case, how do we get left hand side? Okay, so fine. So that then becomes instance goes to that, right? Sure. Okay. If you also wanted to treat this string substitution case in the same way. Well, we don't have to. We don't have to. You tell me. I mean, I, well, I'm just trying to. Yeah, I, I don't mind. Okay, but then we got to make this code do the right thing here, right? So this code here, right? We're going to do a post process on this code here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're telling me that it doesn't matter which one of these it is. For the ESF case, it doesn't matter which one it is. Is that correct? Right. I think so. But for the automatic case, does it matter or not? You're telling me in the automatic case, we're going to do, what did we agree to do in the automatic case? <sighs> what did we agree to do in the Wolfram model case for automatic? I, I don't know. Okay, we gotta, we got to focus here for a minute, okay? We're... We're going to include the LHS in the Wolfram model case, in the automatic case, but we're not going to include it. Okay, what do you think we should do? Let's let's start with that. Uh, I think in every case, we should, in order to minimize confusion, I think we should have the general rule, the rest, and the left-hand side. And yes, that will lead to a small amount of redundancy in the strings case, but I think it will prevent this whole convoluted structure that we're trying to build Okay, fine. It Let's do it that way. That. I, I have no problem with that. Let's do it that way. Okay. Okay. But then, then this thing, this event specification function allows us to untangle that a bit. Right. Right. But get, yeah, okay. My, my point is only that given that we can come up with a unified formalism for all of these cases, we might as well do that so that we don't have, you know, 50 different checks. Yeah, I agree. I session. agree. I agree. It's fine. Okay, so can we please write the code that, that, so we don't know exactly what this is going to do, but um, let's write this code. Let's modify this code so that it returns in the form. Because we're missing. Left hand side. Right. It's kind of unfortunate that when we have this here, where do we get the list of rules? Do we still have the list of rules here? No. We could pass that in if we wanted to, to everything. Yeah. Seems like it might be useful to pass that in. And assuming we pass that in, which we can easily do by editing everything here, assuming we pass that in, then we can still pick up rule number if we want to. Right.
Okay, so we'll assume we're going to do that. Okay, now we have to modify this code. The only thing we have to modify here is so. This doesn't care. Well, we may choose to have automatic do slightly different things in different cases, but that's a detail. That's what applies after this, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so how do we modify these cases? Do you get what I'm saying to it? So what we're gonna do for those cases is everybody's gonna come out in the form of rule, rest, LHS, correct? Yeah. Right. Rule, rest, instance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, this is your code. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you could just could you could just modify this, and I'll do something else while you're doing that. I mean, I'll I'll write yeah. this part. Sure. Okay, so I'm going to assume that you're going to come out with a list of events, actually a list of list of events, because you've got right for every step. Right, so then, but you're going to process the events for other purposes. So where do we add the step number? You get what I'm saying? I mean, I can add the step number here easily enough. Right. But is that sufficient? Or are you using the events independently somewhere else? I think you've got the event function being used elsewhere, don't you? Well, yeah, I mean, in the evolution events graph and in, in the evolution causal graph, everything that involves tracing states. Okay, so how do we get the step number in there in all cases? In all cases? Yeah, because we're going to want it. We, we might want to display it when we've got some graph that we've rearranged in all kinds of elaborate ways. For example, for example, some of these graphs, we might want to plot them so that the events that occur at different steps are arranged in different places vertically. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that, that's fine. If, if, we, if you want to include the step number as part of the event specification, then we, can, then we can do that easily because it, it's, it's a nest list. So all we have to do is look at the previous, you know, uh, an event specification for the previous step and just add one. Okay, fine. All right, so then, then the raw list is going to be rule, rest, instance, and step, like this. Okay. And then all that this is going to do, all apply event specification is going to do is rather trivially to every element here, it's just going to, I mean, it's trivial what it's doing. It's absolutely trivial, right? Right. Okay, could, could you modify those things? And I, I will just work on getting the documentation up to date and, and putting this in. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Okay. Yep, have you, uh, are you all saved on your end? Can I just- I'm saved now. Why don't you take a copy of it right now? Okay. And then, then why don't you? How how much you? How much code do you think you're going to modify? Uh, well, I'm going to have to modify all of the evolution events graph stuff. Probably, maybe not actually. Let Let's take this code out for the time being. Okay, and then I'm going to resave here. Okay. And do you want to? Do you want to just call me back in a few minutes or how should we do this? Uh, yeah, I'm happy to do that. Okay, uh, how do you, how should we do that? Well, why don't you just... Um, um, I can ping you or something. Yeah, fine, ping me. Uh, we, we, should we leave this? Well, we can, let's stop the Zoom session and we'll, let's stop the Zoom session and then you could just call me, right? Okay. Okay. Okay, right, see you in a sec. See ya, goodbye. Okay,